Two long wires at distance B apart carry equal anti-parallel current I as shown in the figure 33-45. Show that the magnetic field strength at point P, which is equal distance from the wires, is given by this. In what direction does B point? Okay. So the idea here is a current carrying straight wire will create a circular magnetic field around it. And the direction is going to be determined by the right hand rule. So for the magnitude, it's going to be given by the formula mu naught i over 2 pi r. And so that's what we're going to do for the magnitude. Now for the direction, we do a right hand rule. So you place your thumb in the direction of the current, in this case out of the page, and you wrap your fingers and it's going to be a circle going in the uh, counterclockwise direction for the top one. I'll call this top one, one. Now for the bottom one, it's going to be into the page, wrap your fingers, and so it's going to be going clockwise this way. And I'll call this one, two. And just to kind of get an idea here, we'll do a big shape here, big circle. And um, this way we can kind of see how it overlaps. Whoop, make big, towards circle, towards the middle, right about there, and maybe a little bit smaller. There we go, that's what we're gonna go for. So this is for the top one. And we can tell, we determined already, right hand rule, current's coming out, wrap your fingers, counterclockwise, so this is going to create a current, a magnetic field going up and to the right. Up and to the right. So then the magnetic field for the bottom one changes to purple just to keep some level of consistency. Drag this down here. This is going to create a magnetic field to the bottom right, like so. Yes, and not drawn to scale because this should be perpendicular. Um, actually, I should probably draw it better like that. So it's going to be like this for the bottom one because it's going to be tangent to the circle. And for the top, I'll do it a little bit better. Oh, change this to green. I know I don't actually have to change it to green. You get the idea. But I'm going to do it anyway. And this is going to go off in that direction. OK, so now we got the vectors taken care of. And from this point, we can see that, let's see here. Um, actually, maybe I still want the circle. We want to do sine and cosine to figure these angles out here. So when we, we can tell just by looking at these and some basic symmetry that the y components are going to cancel each other out. So all we're really concerned with here is the x component. So there's going to be magnetic field from the top, which I'm going to call 1, in the x direction. And I'm going to add that to magnetic field 2 in the x direction because magnetic fields, this will be B1, Y. This will be B2, Y. The magnetic fields in the y directions, they cancel each other out. So what we're really doing is we're just going to add up the two um, y directions. So the angles here, this is going to be theta. This is going to be theta, where that is the same angle as this theta right here, and that angle theta right there. Yes, and I think one way that we could kind of see this is if we extend this line over this way, this, this theta is the same as that theta, and if we rotate 
this 90 degrees, then basically the x-axis becomes the y-axis and it's going to be that theta over there. And this theta on the this side right here is going to be the mirror image of this theta over here. So yes, this angle right there is going to be theta. I know, a little bit more confusing than I intended. I'm going to redraw the relevant portion of this triangle right here. So this right here is going to be, eh, that does not look, there we go. A little bit exaggerated in all the right ways. B1x, that's what we're concerned about. This is going to be B1. And this will be theta. And then we're going to be using the equivalent triangle right down here, or the similar triangle, I guess is the correct term, where we have R, B over 2, and theta. All right, so now we've got all the concept down. We're going to start doing some of the maths. So the magnetic field total, TOT for total, is going to be 2 times magnetic field, um, I'm just going to say call it magnetic field B, and I'll call it 1, doesn't matter though, in the x direction, because magnetic the magnitude of 1 is going to be the same as magnetic field 2 because they're the same distance and they have the same currents. So one thing to know then, we'll do SOHCAHTOA, and this B1x, looking at this triangle here, we're going to use, let's try sine. Sine of theta is opposite, which is going to be B1x, over hypotenuse, which is going to be just B1. Therefore, uh, yes, B1x equals magnetic field 1 times sine of theta. Now, we don't know what sine of theta is, but we can use our similar triangle over here to write out what it, it's going to be as well. So, you know, sine of theta is, as we already discussed, opposite over hypotenuse. And this opposite we can use is going to be B over 2. B over 2. And the hypotenuse is going to be um, not R, but it's going to be B over 2 squared plus R squared square rooted. So this is Pythagorean theorem. So we do B over 2 squared plus R squared square rooted. So now we can rewrite our term B1x as uh, let's see, B1 times sine of theta, which is B over 2 times B over 2 squared plus R squared square rooted. Okay, so now the only thing we really need to work then on is B1. So we're going to go back to our uh, formula for magnetic, for magnetic field generated by a current carrying a wire. And for this, I need to be careful because they also used R, and this R is just the distance from the um, wire. So this is going to be mu naught I over 2 pi. And then for the R, I'm going to use um, our hypotenuse here, the distance from the wire to point P, which is this triangle right here, which becomes B over 2, quantity squared, plus R squared, quantity square rooted. All right, now we put everything together. So we're going to start with, let's see, do I have, what kind of color do I got? Ooh, orange, I'll do red. So I'm going to say B total is 2 times B1, where 
B1 or B1x, which is B1, which is what we have right down here is B. So it's going to be mu naught i over 2 pi times 1 over b over 2 squared plus r squared quantity square rooted and then we're going to multiply that by sine of theta which is going to be this right there which is b over 2 divided by quantity b over 2 squared plus r squared quantity square rooted. Okay, so now we can do some simplifications. So I'm going to start by saying that the 2's cancel. Um, so this is going to be mu naught i times b over 2. So now we have the two radicals here. So a square root squared or multiplied by itself just gets rid of the square root. So this becomes uh, 1 over b squared over 4 because the 2 on the bottom squared becomes uh, 4 and then plus r squared uh, plus r squared but I'm going to write this as 4r squared over 4 which is the same as 1, 4 over 4 is the same as 1, and so I can do that, but that's just so we can have a common denominator. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to pull out that 4 and put it up on top. So we're going to have 4, because dividing by 1 fourth is the same as multiplying the entire, dividing by 1 fourth is the same as multiplying by 4. So that's how I could take that 4 and move it to the numerator mu naught i of b. I know, I'm, I'm skipping a lot of small steps. Um, some people look at that and be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And some people be like, I have no idea what's going on, which is, which is fair. 4r squared. Um, and then the 4 and the 2 cancel, and we get just a 2 up top. All right, so let's see how close that is to what we actually want as an answer. Uh, might be close. All right, so I'm gonna delete that just to clean it up and write a two in here. So the total magnetic field is two mu naught i b. Oh, did I forget the pi? I totally forgot the pi. Yep. Fail. All right, back to winning, put in the pi. It's always tragic to forget the pi. All right, two mu naught ib over pi. They had four r squared, four r squared plus b squared. Yep, and that's the answer they want, which is good. So, and then the direction is going to be to the right. So this arrow right there, so to the right. So to kind of recap what we did there, because there was a lot of craziness that happened, um, we wanted to find the total magnetic field from two uh, parallel wires with the currents being anti-parallel in opposite directions. And so what we did was we said that the current from a wire is going to generate a circular magnetic field around the wire. You find the direction using the right-hand rule, so we place our thumb in the direction of the current. In this case, it's out of the board, out of the page, and then it's in the direction of your fingers, the way your fingers wrap, which in this case is going to be counterclockwise. We do the same thing with the uh, bottom wire. It's going to be clockwise. We then expand those circles so that the radius of the circles intersect with our point P, and we get two magnetic fields, one going up and to the right, one going uh, down and to the right. The up and down, the x, y values of those magnetic fields cancel because they're vectors, and we're left with just the x. We then use some trig and geometry to find out the values of the x. We double it to, so as to account for the top and the bottom wire, 
and then we do some simplifying math and we get an answer. So not a terribly difficult concept, but there's a lot of steps that are easy to get tripped up on. I hope this helped. See you on the next problem.